Hi there and welcome to another tutorial for the Edexcel Further Pure uh, 1 Maths course. This is my second video on proof by induction and in particular we're focusing on divisibility proofs in this lesson. As always looking at the Edexcel specification, we are in proof, okay, and so far we have um, done proofs for summing series and now we're going to move on to divisibility proofs, i.e. how do you show uh, an expression like 3 to the power of 2n plus 11 is divisible by 4. That's the aim of the game here. Okay, let's start straight away with an example, and in particular, the example they give us in the scheme of work. Let's prove by induction that 3 to the power of 2n plus 11 is divisible by 4 for all n bigger than or equal to 1. Now, just a, a, a quick um, point here. If something is divisible by 4, so let's say... Um, if it's divisible by 4, then it must be in the 4 times tables. So if something is divisible by 4, it can be written as 4 times some whole number m, where m is a whole number. So translating this word, this word sentence, this expression is divisible by 4, is the same as saying that 3 to the 2m plus 11 is equal to 4m for some whole number. Okay, so uh, that's just a bit of background. Let's start off with our proposition. Step one, our proposition. Okay, our proposition is that 3 to the 2n plus 11 is equal to 4 times m for some m, uh, a whole number. Okay, uh, and in particular for all n bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, we're going to move on to the basis case now. Basis case. And we're going to let n equal 1. Now, it's very handy with these divisibility proofs to actually call this expression a function of n. It's very handy to say f of n is equal to 3 to the 2n plus 11. This is very important. It's going to help us with a later stage. So, we want to work out f of 1. And that's equal to 3 squared plus 11. And that's equal to 20 which is clearly divisible by 4. Okay, therefore, true for n equal 1. Okay, third stage here, um, it's our assumption stage. And that is, we're going to assume true, assume the assumption is true, we're going to assume the assumption is true for n equal k. So in particular, f of k, which is 3 to the 2k plus 11, okay, that's divisible by 4. So it can be written as 4 times some number, where that number is a whole number. Okay, so if something is divisible by 4, it can be written as a multiple of 4 times uh, a whole number. Now, we've done all our stages now. The next thing to show is, how could we show, this is just a bit of background working, we would like to show that f, the k plus 1, is divisible, is 4 times some number, wouldn't we? That's what we would like to show. This isn't part of the proof, this is what our aim is. Now, the way these uh, proofs go, an easier way it always tends to show that, is if you can consider f of k plus 1 and subtract f of k, okay, when you put in k plus 1 and then take away when you put in k, if that subtraction is a multiple of 4, then this must be a multiple of 4. Okay? It's because you know by your assumption that f of k is a multiple of 4. If this subtract a multiple of 4 is a multiple of 4, this itself must be a multiple of 4. Okay? So that is the way we're going to do these all these proofs. We're going to work out f of k plus 1 and subtract f of k. If that itself is a multiple of 4, the difference between the k plus 1 and the k is a multiple of 4. Given that the kth one is a multiple of 4, the k plus 1 therefore must also be a multiple of 4. So, moving on to the next stage, the hard stage, the inductive step. We are going to consider, and we're always going to do this, f of k plus 1 subtract f of k going to be equal to 3 to the 2k plus 1 
plus 11, subtract 3 to the 2k plus 11. And if we uh, break this up, this is 3 to the 2k plus 2 plus 11 minus 3 to the 2k minus 11. These 11s cancel here. Here we can break this up as to 3 to the 2 and 3 to the 2k minus 3 to the 2k. We've got 9 3 to the 2k's minus 1 3 to the 2k. So we've got 8 3 to the 2k. And now you can just say, it, for that to be divisible by 4, we know that 8 is 4 times 2. And therefore, uh, this, um, this um, subtraction is divisible by 4. Therefore, f to the k plus 1 is divisible by 4. So true for n equals k plus 1. And then just to finish off with then our last step, our conclusion, we can say it, if it was true for n equals k, then must be true for n equals k plus 1. Since true, since it was true for n equals 1, we know now that 3 to the 2n plus 11 is equal to 4 times some number is divisible by 4 for n bigger than or equal to 1 and m some whole number. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So um, I suggest you have a go at this one here. Pause the video. In 10 seconds, I'll go through. Okay, start off with your proposition. Probably best at this stage actually to call this something. So f of n, which is equal to n cubed minus 7n plus 9, is divisible by 3, so it's equal to 3 times some number um, for n bigger than or equal to 1 and m1 some whole number. That's what we're trying to show. Step two, basis case. Okay, we let n equal one, let n equal one, and we work out f of one. f of one is one cubed minus seven times one plus nine, and you get the answer three, and that certainly is divisible by three. So therefore, this is true for n equal 1. Step 3, your assumption. You assume true for n equal k so that f of k which is k cubed minus 7k plus 9 is a multiple of 3. It's 3 times some number, let's call it big N. And remember what we're trying to show here. Remember what we said. If we could somehow show, this is not part of your proof, this is what we are trying to show. If we could somehow show that f of k plus 1 minus f of k is 3 times something, then we'd be done. Because if the difference uh, between these is a multiple of 3 and that's a multiple of 3, then this must be a multiple of 3 as well. So that's what we're trying to show in the next stage, the inductive step, always the more difficult stage. So, the inductive step. Right, we're going to consider f of k plus 1, subtract f of k. And that's k plus 1 cubed, minus 7k plus 1, plus 9, and all subtract um, f of k, which is k cubed minus 7k plus 9. Okay, let's expand this out. You could do this the long way, or you should remember the binomial theorem. This is k cubed plus 3k squared plus um, 3k plus 1 
minus 7k minus 7, minus 7k minus 7, plus 9, and then minus all of this. So minus k cubed plus 7k minus 9. Okay, let's just do a bit of cancelling here. You've got a k cubed minus a k cubed. You've got a minus 7k plus a 7k. You've got a plus 9 and you've got a minus 9. And what you're left with here is 3k squared plus 3k minus 6 plus 1 minus 7. So you're left with here 3k squared plus 3k minus 6. And that is 3 times k squared plus k minus 2, which is 3 times a number, 3 times a number. So therefore, f of k plus 1 is divisible by 3. And that's it. You've done. You've done. Your last step is your conclusion. And you just say true for n equals k, then true for n equal k plus 1. Since f of 1 divisible by 3, you know that f of n, which is n cubed minus 7n plus 9, is divisible by 3. for n being or equal to 1. And you're done. And that's that. And that's all there is for this. Uh, uh, now, I would suggest you just do one more example, a slightly more complicated example, example 3. Pause the video, have a go through, check you understand everything we've done previously, and see if you can get the right answer. I'll go through in 10 seconds. OK, so we'll go through this. Um, I'm actually just going to uh, jump this one uh, I'm not going to do stage one which is the proposition or stage two which is checking it's true for one 11 squared is 121 plus 12 to the power of one is 133 so that's divisible so I'm not going to do stage one or stage two I'm going to start off with stage three the assumption step and the assumption step would be that f of k you let you assume true for f of k, so f of k is 11 to the k plus 1 plus 12 to the 2k minus 1 is equal to 133 times some number. So that would be the assumption step. Okay, and then the next step would be uh, the inductive step, the hard step, and this is the one I just want to show. You must write out the other steps, but I'm just skipping here just to get you to the key point. You would let n equals k plus 1 and you would consider f of k plus 1 minus f of k, i.e. 11 to the k plus 2 plus 12. Um, if you put in k plus 1 here, you get 2k plus 2 minus 1, which is 2k plus 1. And you subtract off it 11 to the k plus 1 minus 12 to the 2k minus 1. Then you combine terms. Here we've got 11 uh, to the k plus 2, which is 11 times 11 to the k plus 1. You break it up into the k plus 1 so you can combine these. And this is 12 squared times 12 to the 2k minus 1 minus 11k plus 1 minus 12 to the 2k minus 1. So here you've got 11 lots of 11k plus 1 minus 1 lot of 11 to k plus 1. So you've got 10 lots of 11 to the k plus 1. And here you've got um, 144 lots of 12 to the 2k minus 1, minus 1 lot. So you've got plus 143 lots of 12 to the 2k minus 1. Now, you're at a point here where you can't really go much further. What you could do is remember back to your assumption step. Remember this here. Now, you, if you know that 11 to the k plus 1 plus 12 to the 2k minus 1 is 133m, you could rearrange this so that you got 11 to the k plus 1 as the subject 
and that would be 133m minus 12 to the 2k minus 1. This is something you've assumed to be true, so you can just rearrange it. And instead of the 11 to the k plus 1, you could put in this here. I mean, alternatively, we could have made that the subject and substituted in for here. But let's just do it this way and see what we get. So you would get 10 lots of 133m minus 12 to the 2k minus 1 plus... 143 lots of 12 to the 2k minus 1. Okay, so expand this out. You have 1330m and you've got minus 10 lots of 12 to the 2k plus 1 plus 143 lots of 12 to the 2k minus 1. And so this is equal to 1330m. 143 lots of this, take away 10 lots, is simply 133 lots of 12 to the 2k plus 1, which would be a times. And then you could factorise out the 133, so you've got 10m plus 2 to the 2k plus 1. And at that stage, you're done now. You've shown that it's 133 times a whole number, so therefore true for n equal k plus 1. Don't forget step 5, your conclusion. If it's true for uh, You've shown that if it's true for n equals k, then it's true for n equals k plus 1. Since it was true for n is 1, it's true for all n bigger than or equal to 1. You must write that to get your full marks. And um, that is all we're going to do um, on that, um, I suggest for further work you read chapter 6, page 127 to 130, and do exercise 6b all. Thank you for watching this. I hope you found it useful in your FP1 work.